Uh, this year, there was in Belgium a, 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 a new project launch with the VDAB, uh, and uh, th we are now going to hear about that project and to see how we can find a better job using machine learning. Thank you, Philippe. Um, hello, the I Summit. Um, who as you have ever, has ever experienced the struggle of finding the perfect job? Anyone? Who of you has ever experienced the struggle of finding the right employee? Okay, also a lot of people. Uh, well, I have great news for one of the two groups. Um, let me see. It's a great time to be a job seeker um, because the number of jobs is rising and there's less competition from other job seekers. Okay, another question. If you are looking for a job, if you're looking at vacancies, what is the most important thing on that vacancy? What is the most important data uh, to check if there is a match or not? Does anyone know? Yeah? The? The place, yes, the location, that's very important. And of course, the job title, super important. Those are in these, uh, the two most important things. Um, and those are actually very difficult things for a machine. Uh, currently, uh, the most job recommender systems are rule-based. Um, so the, the machine looks at the job seeker and he sees um, that the distance with the job is small, um, so there's a match. The, they look at the job seeker and see that the job title is babysitter, but the job asks for a nanny. Too bad, no match. Um, the person knows English, but the job casually mentions speaks English, so that's no match. Um, the, the person has a driving license B, but the job mentions drive the kids to school. So again, for a rule-based system, there is no match. Uh, so the question here is, how can we build a recommender that truly understands natural language? Um, so with deep learning, of course. Um, and to give a small recap, um, so AI is the biggest box that's just the general concept of machines showing human intelligence. Um, then you have machine learning, uh, which is a special type of algorithms uh, that use data to achieve AI. Um, and then you have deep learning, which is the usage of one specific type of algorithms uh, within machine learning. Uh, and those algorithms, usually they are neural networks. Um, and those networks we will use uh, to create our job recommender, and that's why we have named it uh, JobNet. So, um, yeah, first of all, you might wonder, why would you use deep learning? Uh, well, there's two reasons. Um, if you are having a very complex domain, such as the job market, and you have a lot of data, uh, then deep learning can outperform uh, traditional models. Uh, that is because deep learning models, such as these neural networks, they contain millions of parameters, and all those parameters can absorb uh, knowledge uh, from, the, from the data. Um, so this year's theme of the DI Summit is about uh, demystifying AI. Uh, so I will try to explain how we can make machines read words. Um, so, you all know machines are very good at working with numbers. Uh, so what we do is we take each word in the dictionary uh, and we translate it to 300 numbers. And how it works, you can imagine it a bit like this. The first number of um, 300 numbers could be, is this a job? Is this a word about a job? Yes or no? Then the second number could be, does this have something to do with children? And in that way, you can have a very complex domain of language, which you summarize in just 300 numbers, and you can represent any word in the dictionary. Um, so in deep learning, uh, we call these uh, lists of numbers or vectors, we call these embeddings. Uh, and embeddings is actually a great word um, because all information about a word is embedded uh, into that embedding, into those 300 numbers. Um, 
so we have 300 numbers. Uh, it's also called an embedding or a vector. You can represent them, uh, them as numbers, but of course, some of you might know vectors, you can also represent them in a 300 dimensional space. So let's have a look at how it looks. It's a very simple uh, visual. Um, but the nice thing is that if you have the vector for nanny and you have the vector for babysitter, they are actually very close to each other. Um, and if you take kinderverzorgster, which is the Dutch word, it will be also very close. So here you get a feeling of how machines uh, can understand the semantics of a word. Um, and it goes beyond that. Um, they even contain relationships. So if you take king and you subtract man and you add women, you get queen, exactly. <laughs> So our model has access to these relationships. Um, so our final model, uh, JobNet, is actually a cascade of these all of embeddings, let's say. Uh, so we start with the word embeddings, but of course, if you have a list of words, they form a document. And also, you want to summarize that document. So from the word embeddings, we summarize those into a document embedding. Then we add location embeddings. Um, and finally, we end up with the job and job seeker embeddings. And again, we just summarized the job and the job seeker into 300 numbers. Uh, so you could imagine, for example, the first number to be about the industry, uh, the second number about experience level, another one about language, another one about location. Um, and yeah, so um, <laughs> when we embed uh, all your data. Uh, how does it look? <laughs> it looks something like this. Um, so the, each line is one embedding. Um, each each hor horizontal line is one embedding. And each pixel is one number. And if it's a high number, it's, it's a light pixel. Um, and so we see all people below each other. Um, and actually, you see, for example, there's one line that lights up more. And that's actually where it could be, for example, the country where most people are from Belgium, but there are a few people who are not. Um, okay, so now that you hopefully understand a bit better what embeddings are, um, it's actually quite easy to understand the, the, the overview of the JobNet architecture. Um, so we start with the complex data about jobs and job seekers. There can be structured data, such as age and location, but there can also be unstructured data, such as documents. Uh, those go flow through our deep learning neural network, uh, which, by the way, we implement in the TensorFlow uh, framework. Um, and those generate the job and job seeker embeddings. Uh, and then once we have those embeddings, it's very easy to calculate a similarity score between uh, vectors. Uh, and we know if there's a match or not. Um, there could be one last question that you might be having, and that is, how the hell are these models able to create such useful embeddings? How, what's the trick behind it? Well, um, the trick is to train the model. Um, so before training the model, uh, your neural, neural network contains millions of parameters, but these are all random. Um, so also the embeddings will be random and the similarity will be random, so it's useless. Uh, what we need is we need examples, historical examples, um, to show the model, to teach the model right from wrong. Uh, and what do we use for that? We use click data. So if a person clicks on a job multiple times, we assume that he's interested in that job. And so we know there's a match. So what we do is we take a matching pair of uh, job and job seeker data. We send them through the model and we see what happens. Um, and it could be that the similarity score is high at random. Then the model has actually done a good job. So we don't have to change anything, but of course, there's a high chance that the model will do it wrong and that the similarity will be low, even though it should be high. So what we then do is we tweak a little bit uh, the parameters in the neural network 
uh, in the right direction. Uh, and this principle, that's actually the basis behind gradient descent, is it called. Uh, and if you do that millions of times, uh, you end up with a deep learning model that truly understands uh, natural language and the job market. Uh, so to conclude, yeah, JobNet has learned to understand natural language. Um, and if you don't believe me, we will be in production soon at vdab.be. Uh, so, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, my name is Florian. I'm the co-founder and project lead at Radix.ai. Uh, and if you want to talk about deep learning, natural language processing, or JobNet in specific, uh, feel free to come talk to me or one of my co-founders, the blonde guy at the stairs there, <laughs> and the brown hair guy <laughs> at the stairs there, Davio and Lorenzo. So, thank you. Thank you.